Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're coming back to the Halo 65. We're going to go ahead and tune the stabilizers and go ahead and try out these baby raccoon switches that Newfie was kind enough to include uh, with uh, the Rose Glaciers that were already installed. Now this is a linear switch um, by Gatoron, manufactured by Gatoron, I think in collaboration with Nufi Studios. It has a 55 gram actuation force, a total travel of 3.6 millimeter with actuation travel of 2 millimeter. The top housing is made from polycarbonate, the stem is made from palm, and the bottom housing is made from nylon PA66. It does have an extended spring and it does come factory lube. It's a nice heavier linear that has a nice snap to it and there is no spring thing to speak of. So it's going to be interesting. But if you saw the previous video, um, you would have noticed that I, I like this keyboard. Everything minus the stabilizers. That's the only thing that gave me a little pause was the stabilizers because the tolerances on them aren't tight enough so they're quite loose. They are plate mounted stabilizers but I think we can tune them up real quick and basically I'm just going to go in tune the stabilizers real quick maybe give them a little bit more lube. I don't think they're going to require anything like a plumber's mod tape. It's really just getting the, 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 the tape mod so that they are nice and stable and I think that would will take care of the issues or the, the ticking that the uh, stabilizers currently exhibit. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, go ahead, we're gonna stick with the, the default keycaps. I will be coming back to this later doing a little bit of modding to it and then I'm looking forward to trying out some taller keycap profiles like either some MT3 or some SA keycaps. But for right now, let's go ahead and get started. Switch out these switches and let's make these stabilizers stable. Now that we got the keys off, we can see the board. And I wanted to do something right here to show you guys this little halo frame. As you can see, oh, looks like I have, okay. See how that side light glow that it has on the edges, actually glows on the inside of the keyboard. So that halo effect goes all throughout. I actually, the design of this diffuser is quite interesting to me and I really, I really like how they implemented it. Now just real quick, I wanted to point out something that I really do enjoy seeing, QC Pass. Um, one of the issues that I've had over the last year with two of the bigger uh, budget to mid-tier uh, brands are their QAQC process, namely Epo Maker and Akko. Now Akko switches actually include a card, say inspected by, and I literally have not had a single Akko switch that died on me that I wasn't messing with or Franken switching or something like that and I messed up the, the leaf spring. but. All of Akko's switches are nice and they have QA, QC. Over the past year, I've purchased seven Akko keyboards. Five of those sevens had defects, some breaking defects, some minor defects, but there was no QA, QC sticker anywhere to be found on the inside, on the outside, nowhere. Uh, they themselves have, have stated through different Twitter posts or comments on Discord, which were erased shortly thereafter uh, that their QA, QC and their customer service department were downsized during the pandemic and that they're going to try to work with a more bare bone crew. And unfortunately, they seem to be putting out more models and doing less QA, QC and their customer support went from being one of the better customer support providers in this industry to 
one of the worst. Now, some people are saying that they have good experiences at the same time. Others are saying they're having bad experiences. So it seems to be there might be a couple of agents there that are actually worthwhile in doing you know the job to help the customer while there's others that just are getting through numbers. I don't know. I just know that I'm, for the moment, I mean, I pretty much have written off Epo Maker at least buying directly from any of their stores. I will, if I want to review a unit, check it out through Amazon because I, I know I'm not going to have any issues should the board be defective. But Akko boards, I'm staying away for, for right now. But that's the reason why. So this is extremely appreciated. Thank you, Newfie. All right, so let's go ahead and get these switches, these Rose Glazier tactile switches out of the way. Now, this is also a nice um, switch that I actually quite like. Now, it is marked or branded with Nufi, um, but I believe it's also a Gatoron collaboration. It's more of a lightweight tactile, but it has has a bit of a clackiness to it. Um, no spring pink to speak of, slightly scratchy, um, but a decent tactile nonetheless. I left the space bar in there. As you notice, this one's blue. It's actually called the Night Breeze. And it's quite interesting. I thought that they did that, but they actually included a, um, a linear switch. I also, I, I gotta say, I really like this. They included a sample of each of the switches that are available. But I just wanted to go ahead and take out that one, put it in with the batch, and take out the Night Breeze. This one is also ba badged with Nufi. And It's a nice, medium to lightweight, um, definitely lighter than those, uh, than the baby raccoons, uh, but a decent linear. They put it under the space bar, and I think it helps. Um, I like the technology on the space bar, the ghost bar, they call it. So now, let's go ahead and fix. See, this is what I'm talking about. That's the only thing that QC did miss, unless that wasn't, you know, as long as they weren't falling off, then it, then it works. Now, we can see here that this does appear to be a tray mount keyboard. I kind of thought that, that it was from the beginning. But just like with the V series, I find no issue with typing on this. I Don't get me wrong, I don't mind a little bit of flex, but in this case, I think... Uh, they've done a good implementation of a, um, a tray mount keyboard. Let's go ahead and pop these old guys off. Take out the, the silicone, I like this, designed by Nufi. And it actually states space bar silicone, which is, I don't know, I think it's kind of cool. And one more. All right. So now, a lot of people like to use a lot of different types of tape. And what we can see here, the lubrication. And it actually looks like, oh yeah, there's definitely a little bit of lubrication on the PCB. And we see BT801 as the, um, looks like to be the, the, uh, the PCB. Now it looks like it has, yeah, it does. It has like, I would say IPXE film on top of the PC, PCB because you can definitely see how it lines up with the holes right there. And you can definitely feel it, it's a nice soft rubber. That's why I think it's the IPXE. Designed by Nufi. All right, but later on we'll be coming back to this and opening her up and seeing how she's constructed. But for right now, 
we're doing the stabilizer mod. I'll do the first one here in slow motion for those folks that haven't had a chance to, uh, to see this yet. Um, you can use any kind of tape. I prefer to use either the, this is called the gauze tape, and this is medical tape. When I need a little bit more thickness, this one has a little bit more of that rubbery thickness, but most of the times I just go with the uh, white gauze tape. I like to cut a small yet decent enough wide strip that it's going to fit well into the spots that I needed to. When I first started doing this, I was putting them both the top and the bottom. We learned that there was no need for that and actually it could cause some binding issues. So once I have a strip, cut two small pieces. They really don't have to be that big. And then what we want to do is go where, not where there's a little wedge taken out, like you can see right there, but we want to go on the flat part of the, or where there is no wedge, uh, where the stabilizers go into, and put a piece of tape there. And we want to wrap it around the plate. Now this does have some, uh, uh, feels like silicone, could be poron, but it does have uh, both case dampening and plate PCB dampening. All right, so we have one taken care of right there. Let's get another one. Oh, that one's a little too small. Let's just take a little bit off of this one. I think we'll be good. Yeah. So as long as the width is not more than the actual size of that spot, we're good. We don't want it to be attaching to the legs and causing any binding issues. And, I mean, it doesn't have to be stuck on there perfectly, but we do want to make sure that it's at least stuck at the top. Um, if it keeps wanting to fly out from the bottom, it will most likely lock into place once we put it in. Now, as we saw before, uh, these are lubricated, but I am going to add just a little bit more just because I'm messing with them. And I'm just going to add a little bit. This is super lube right into the hole where the metal and the plastic meet. More of a, This is more grease than it is oil. But I like to just place it right there because that's the primary spot. From feeling these, I think they would benefit from, um, from a, um, like a plumber's mod. Then we go ahead and stick them back in. As you can see, that goes where they clip in. We want to make sure that we push this out. That's the lock. That's basically ensuring that they're on there good. Now, we can take a look. And that stabilizer is basically moving the plate. It's no longer loose. That's a simple fix for an issue that actually plagues a lot of even good keyboards. Uh, I know a lot of people, they rush to just go and replace the stabilizers. There's only been a couple of instances where I felt I needed to replace the stabilizers. In most cases, even the cheapest stabilizers can be tuned to sound well. And if your spacebar stabilizer rattles a lot, uh, put it on a flat surface and make sure that it is um, straight and flat. Now that's the only time, there's been a few times that the space bar wire was just so mangled I had to replace it with another space bar wire that I was still able to use the housing and everything else. So here we definitely got a lot more <laughs> grease. We're not gonna have to grease these up anymore. They are definitely greased as we can see, but that'll be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed up through the rest of these um, stabilizers. Alright, so now we've got the stabilizers on there. As we can see, that little bit of tape did the difference because, I mean, tolerances we were talking about are a tenth of a millimeter or less um, to make sure that those stabilizers fit. So, if uh, 
newfie is watching, I would highly recommend for the Halo 96 and any revisions you might do of these um, to tighten up the tolerances on the on the stabilizers because now this is this is going to change the game. I think now obviously we're going to new switches to linears, but I think we're going to hear a big difference in the sound test, um, especially when it comes to the stabilizers. So let me go ahead and load up these baby raccoons and then we'll load up the uh, keycaps and see how it sounds. All right, so now we've loaded up Baby Raccoon linear switches in here. I just wanted to give a quick show of the lights. I really do like that halo effect. And I mean, that's why I'm assuming they call this the halo keyboard. That light coming through like this. And I know that you can turn off the, the backlights on the RGB, the, the per key RGB, and just have that glowing. But and there's quite a few effects which I will be covering when I cover the software on this but now we've got linears on here and we have basically just added a little bit of tape to make those stabilizers more stable so we're going to go ahead and load up the keycaps check it out and then do a sound test And here we are, the Halo 75, stabilizers modified just slightly with the tape so that they're stable. And we've switched out the Rose Glacier tactile switches for the Baby Raccoon linear switches. So, stabilizers are a world of difference now. This one does sound like it could use plumber's mod. That's probably what I'll do when I come back and do a full mod on this keyboard. Well, anyway, like I said, I am now using this keyboard as my daily. I was using the Keychron V5. Um, I tend to actually, I think I like tray mount better than gasket mount. I know that's blasphemy, but I mean, I, I went through a whole series of these gasket mount keyboards, the Next Time 75, the IK75, uh, the TH80. Don't get me wrong, nice boards, especially the IK75. But despite them being gasket mounted, I mean, you have to modify it to even get just the tiniest amount of flex. Despite them sitting on gaskets, they're so tight and the gaskets are just don't have any room to move. So once you close it all up, it's hardly any different than a tray mount. And just to repeat myself, tray mount has been the standard for about as long as keyboards have been around. Uh, gasket mounts and those new type of mounts are just within the last decade or so. So that's just my little PSA. I, uh, I think she's gonna sound a, a little bit better uh, with this sound test today, but what do you guys think? So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the sound test of this yeah, slightly modified and switched out Halo 75. I'd love to hear your feedback and your comments below. And if you've got any thoughts of things for me to look at when I do go, because the next video I'm going to be opening up this keyboard and I'm probably going to be changing out the switches, um, the keycaps, who knows what else we'll do to it. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.